68 cars leave the pit and move smoothly into the first turn behind the pace car. Bill France, president of NASCAR, the National Association for Stock Cars, leads them around. On the pole position, inside front row, Carl Burris, car number 20. Banjo Matthews, Fireball Roberts, and Marion Farr complete the first two rows. When the pace car dives into the pit road on the next go-round, the green flag will turn them loose. Moving smartly out of the long first and second turn, they reached the back stretch of the two and a half mile speedway completed only one year ago. They're moving faster now, riding higher on the 31 degree bank turn, designed for speeds of 200 miles an hour. The pace cars off the track, here they come. They're racing. Grabs the lead. Fireball Roberts right behind him as they climb the bank into the first turn. <laughs> Roaring down the back stretch, 68 cars play follow the leader at 150 miles an hour. Out of the fourth turn, end of lap one. The leaders at record speed, but the rest of the field is in trouble back in the fourth turn. <laughs> the most fantastic pileup in auto racing history takes 37 cars out of the race. Then a miracle. The car landed right side up. Weinberg is unhurt. The field's... Darbo's trying to pass. They're in deep trouble. Hale Yarbrough's over the wall. He never even touched the guardrails. He sailed down that 40-foot slope. That car he so carefully put together lies at the bottom of a hill, a hundred feet outside the guardrail. Let's go back 1965. Kale Yarborough. Watch him. Over the wall. <laughs> so we tangled just a little bit, but and my car got completely airborne. It just went up in there, over the his car, completely over the guardrail. Didn't even touch the guardrail now. And it's about 30 feet, 25 or 30 feet down that embankment on the other side. A car's out of control. Maynard Troyer's Ford number 60 flips an incredible number of times. The roll bar cage that protects the driver and keeps the roof up is intact. The yellow flag whips and caution lights at key points around the track signal all drivers to slow down. Seat belts and shoulder harness kept Troyer in his seat and in the car. The huge safety apparatus of the Speedway and NASCAR swings into action. There are dozens of safety vehicles stationed around the track as well as a fully equipped hospital in the infield for the care of drivers and spectators. One man's disaster is another's opportunity. The front runners pit while the caution signal slows the field. Buddy Baker, Dodge number 11, is refueled and out of the pits in 12 seconds. While the car is refueled, let's see again Maynard Troyer's near disaster. Troyer's engine blew, locking the rear wheels. As he headed down off the high banks, Troyer's car dug in and began to roll with the momentum of 4,000 pounds moving at more than 150 miles an hour. As it rolled, 
fenders and other parts were ripped from the body and scattered on the track. Twisting through the air, it landed on its wheels and the added spring of tires and suspension made it leap into the air like a hooked sailfish. Through 18 flips, the roll cage kept the cockpit open and Troyer sustained only minor injuries. Oh, level and in trouble is 07 LaJoy. Randy LaJoy slamming into the wall. Randy LaJoy out of Norwalk, Connecticut, destroying his automobile. Randy LaJoy, second generation driver, absolutely destroying the Bob Johnson car number 07. Oh, that was horrible. Yet again, the car spun, lost control, and lifted up and flew, and it flew into that wall, bottom first. It hit with the underside of the car, right on that wall. Uh, there's going to have to be a rethink about that wall. That's the third major crash that wall has had in the last two years, and uh, I can only think they're going to have to shallow down the angle of attack on that wall. This was the rookie of the year on the NASCAR North Tool a, a year ago. He's 21 years old won four races on that northern tour a year back. This was his first time here at Daytona. Randy LaJoy. And let's look at it again. Out of control, off turn four. So similar to the 15 Ricky Rudd, but he collects the wall which Rudd just missed sails bottom side at 190 miles an hour into the retainer and the car is destroyed Bobby Allison is next up Sun Davy should be next you can see Earnhardt the yellow car is still in the picture but Buddy Baker, who has a lot of sentiment on Jenner and Observer, has one of the real friends. Oh, we Bobby have a problem. Is blown tire. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash here on the front stretch. It has torn out a complete section of protective railing separating it. Alan Kowicki becomes involved. Debris and and is collecting other cars. There is a lot of debris in the front stretch. Larry, I think a tire blew. I think oh, I saw a tire coming apart absolutely. while he was right here in the tri-oval right nearing rear. the starting line. Right rear, it begins to shred. And the car goes out of control. You're at 210 miles an hour. You can see the right rear going. You see the debris there on the left-hand side of your screen. Earnhardt avoids Bobby. The car goes backwards. The aerodynamics get underneath the car, and Allison gets up into the fence. The aerodynamics lifted the car. They're not built to go backwards. Right underneath Harold Kinder. Harold, he stayed in there. Boy, I'll tell you, talk about a trooper. Kinder is right there. He's got the yellow flag out right away. That is a veteran, confident flagman. Here comes the rest of the field down. They've decelerated to maybe 180 miles an hour, but all the debris, there's Petty, there's Kawicki spinning. Uh, there's just nowhere for many of these drivers to go because there's so much of what was left over from the initial impact on the front stretch and there was just nowhere to go. And tires began to explode too as they ran over debris caused by the Allison crash. Well, it's very rare that you see that catch fencing do its job, but it sure did its job here at Talladega today. As If it hadn't been there or if it had not been as strong as it was, Bobby Allison's car would very clearly have gone into the grandstand right below us here in the broadcast booth. There's the tire going. Here's another angle of it, and uh, we'll just let you watch it because we've covered it well. Well, Dale Earnhardt has gone out in front, but it has not been without incident here. Let's take a look at how he did it back in lap number 72. There you see Bodine in the five. He gets trapped on a slow <laughs> car. And as he gets around, Earnhardt just drives around <laughs> in the dirt. He goes through now the let's dirt. Take, let's take another look in the dirt at what happened here. Another vantage point. You see the slow car, and Bodine is caught, and down to the inside <laughs> goes Earnhardt in the number three. It's like a little shortcut there, and he goes out in front. They're very, very sticky would pick up gravel and subsequently in the race he might have a cut, a cut tire he might have a flat they've been having problems Jack told me all week with cars going back from the pits to the garage and getting flats back there so Bojan may be at some risk and look at this there Bojan it is. loses it and gets into the barrier Jeff Bodine smacks that wall good and he unhooks in the cockpit 
as he exits, Jeff Bodine's run for the $200,000 has come to an end. Well, as we saw, Al Unser Sr. have a flat, and we had uh, considered the possibility that Bodine's earlier off course. He's getting really... back in, Sam. Yeah, he looked at his tire, his right rear tire, which he may have suspected uh, had gone down on him. I think he inspected it, and it was okay. Now he's trying to get it to start, but it's flooded. Here is the accident that set up the yellow. Watch Bodine as he makes his turn in a very fast section of the course, loses the back end, slides all the way across and catches the barrier with the right side of the car. Wiki leading this. Oh, look at Earnhardt. Earnhardt got sideways. Somebody looked like made some contact. With uh oh, the... we've got a problem. Yeah, contact here for sure. Darrell Walker and Joe Rutherford. Uh oh, Walker car gets on his roof and over and over. Darrell Waltrip tumbling down the backstretch in what appears to be a very, very serious crash. Joe Rutman, the other car involved in that incident. And here comes Earnhardt. Looks like someone had tapped him. But, oh, then, Kowicki came down and touched Darrell. Threw him back into Rutman. Rutman gets in the side of him. And, then and here's here, the road they hit. Yep. Yeah. When he hits the road, it gets him airborne, and the car starts over. Of course, he was get, being pushed by the car number 75. That was just a, a circumstance there. There was certainly nothing aerodynamic that caused that crash. When no. they went over that paved road, which is part of the road course, that's when the car got airborne and began to flip. Here's another angle. We we'll see Darrell down on the inside of Alan Kowicki. And there's Earnhardt pulling out making it about three abreast back there, but quick, he was up a little bit high, and Darrell looked like, the, you know, the, they just went together as they came off of turn two and started Darrell to the infield, and Rutten took him with him. Car rolled over five or six times and came to rest on its side. Once again, Darrell is at the front of the this pack here on With the, the orange inside. bumper down right. on the inside there i just wonder if the 22 car of sterling marlin if he doesn't bump the seven car it looked to me like there was a little bit of contact mm -hmm. between those two cars which got kawiki out of control yeah i mean they're just trying to to get as close as they possibly can because the closer you get the faster they go we saw daryl's car when it hit that road starts it flipping and it's so muddy that the car just dug into the it's rained so much here the car dug into the ground and just uh, you know that, that we now we understand that the cars are running 175 80 190 miles per hour at that point and we see a tire that's come off he is just a car length back of Earnhardt Davey Allison coming up but I don't think will be a factor go. Kyle just hauls it off the corner. He's got the inside. Oh, he He's up to Earnhardt's oh. bumper. Earnhardt takes oh, it. They're off the, the, the racing service down on the uh -oh. flat part of the racetrack. Look and out. Oh, oh, oh. And it's Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty coming to the checkered flag. Here comes Davey Allison to the bottom. It'll be the finish. Everybody oh, was oh, waiting for it. Oh, they we crashed can. past the finish line. Uh -oh. They have crashed into turn number one. And Davey Allison is in a shower of sparks. He won the race, but he sure paid the price for it. Here they come, off the fourth corner. Ernie Urban leads them down now. Is he going to win the Winston 500? Jimmy Spencer is second. They come through the trioval. Checkered is waving. Ernie Urban wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne. And flips wildly right at the start-finish line, very reminiscent of his accident at Daytona. Oh, oh man. That is too bad. What a way. Yeah, he's moving. I see him moving around in the car. I see, I, I saw that. We see his head moving around. Yes, we do. Now, here is what happened. Okay, there's Rusty and Dale Jarrett running side by side. Earnhardt comes down on the inside trying to draft Rusty and go right out of the picture. And it looks, there he is. Earnhardt right up on the back bumper of Rusty, and he does touch him. That's and why around he goes, and that's one reason that Dale Earnhardt went down there. That's why he was so concerned, because he touched Rusty Wallace to start this situation, it looks like. And the car overturns about six or seven times, pirouetting on its nose, end over end, side over side, comes to a rest on its wheels between the start-finish line and turn one. He will be credited with sixth finishing position. Here is another angle. 
Here they come down through there. Jarrett and Rusty Wallace side by side. Dale trying to get down on the inside, trying to go down. And looks like he just touched Rusty. And the car, just like Daytona, started flying. It goes up in the air. I thought maybe it was going to do like Jimmy Spencer did last year mm -hmm. and come back on its wheels, but it didn't. It caught. And here it goes again. There is a huge cheer going up from the grandstand just opposite of where Rusty's car has come to a rest. And we assume that the cheers are because he is out of the car. There are four, five cars that have crashed here in the trial. But there is Neil Bonnet's number 31 torn up front and rear. The Musgrave car is torn up. He's told his crew that he is OK. You're in Neil Bonnet's car. Bonnet's car lies in the grass just at the bottom of the track. Neil wow, his car Bonnet. goes upside down. And then comes back on the, the uh, wheels as we see Musgrave's car sliding up against the wall. Flames coming from it as he comes across the start finish line. From inside of Bonnet's car. torn some fence up as the, the, the car got upside down, got up into the retaining fence here. Quite a bit of damage to the fence. Well, let's look again here. Well, there it is. Right the up back over. Right up over it, yeah. And he gets hit by the, like the 41 car of Phil Parsons. <laughs> Well, they were battling for the fifth position, and you can see Sipton got up on the inside there just a little bit, upset his car a little bit, and Markham was coming off of there at full speed, clipped him and sent him into the inside retaining wall. The car flipped over here. We'll see it again. They're ready coming off that turn. Get together around and up over the wall and down on his wheels once again. Horrendous impact, and once again, you have to give a call. Seven. And they were coming for the checkered flag, Jerry running, battling for the fifth position, and the car number 77 gets a tag from behind by Curtis Markham and into the end of the retaining wall that leads into pit road. The car flipped over, landed back on its wheels. Different angle here, real time. Oh, my heavens, what an impact and roll. Hey, late in the race, the number 77 car of Victor Sifton gets bumped, and look out, he's in to the water barrier. Fortunately, suffered bruised elbows. A very scary moment for Bill Elliott. The car got way off of the ground, got airborne. It came down on all fours, and Elliott has stopped the car off of corner number two in the back stretch on the inside of the racetrack, and he is waving to everybody. The safety crew has arrived, but look at what happened to Bill Elliott. Well, you can see he's already off on the grass, Bob. The car gets up in the air, comes down, bounces around. The deck lid flies off of it. There, finally, the roof flap comes up as he turns backwards. Good bit of damage done to the McDonald's Ford, but... Here it is once again. Watch the right side here. We pan back and catch Elliott's car way up in the air. It gets over on the right corner and amazingly doesn't come over. Yeah, that is amazing, Bob. And it fortunately lands back on its four wheels. Don't know what happened that started that accident. Trickle was on the low side coming oh, in for two. And around goes Earnhardt up in the air and over. Both cars land on their wheels. But Trickle and Earnhardt Jr. 
go for a wild ride down the back straightaway of Daytona. All right, let's see what happened between Dick Trickle, the orange car, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Here's the orange car of Dick Trickle. And you can see Trickle, he must have gotten hit from behind and shot right straight into Earnhardt's car. And you see Earnhardt's car lift, sets back down on the hood of Dick Trickle's car, then comes back down on his wheels. I'm not sure what the Olympic judges would give that landing, but it was a wild one. Let's take another look. You see Trickle right there. That's Buckshot Jones behind the two of them as they come off the corner there. Okay, we'll follow this on down through here a little bit and see what they're side by side. Here comes Buckshot with a great run off the corner. You see him coming up right there. He touches Trickle in the right rear corner into the three of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Up in the air. Look at this. The roof flaps didn't even have time to come up. They did once he turned backwards, but let's slow it down here. Yeah, the roof flaps did come up, too. They went back down. But, Ned, it's possible with that car of trickles right behind Earnhardt's, the roof flaps may not have had a chance to spoil the air to keep him on the ground. Exactly. They just talked to Steve on the uh, radio, and they asked him if he was okay. He said, yeah, I'm all right. Then they asked him, what happened? He said, I have no idea what happened. Well, it was incredible, is all we can say. I tell you what, that's not going to be easy to get off there. Well, I guess they just hook to it and just jerk it off. But, folks, look here what happened. Steve Parker's going to come to watch as he backs in the fence. Overturns completely in the air, comes down on all four. Looks like those guys at the X Games, the way they do those uh, <laughs> skates. Wow. Man, oh, man. That's strategy that they worked out to get him up in the top. Oh, another car up on the wall here. It's Ken Schrader. Just like the one car. Oh, he, and he stays on the roof. Yeah. Steve Park landed on all fours, but Schrader is upside down. Let's take a look at it. Again, it's just about the same type of crash. He goes over once, one and a half times and then rolls back on the hood. Looked like he was going to roll on the wheels and yeah. all of a sudden, whoa, he's going to go down and talk to somebody. No, nope. uh -oh. guess he just ran across the racetrack. We're under caution at Daytona. Michael Waltrip has just taken a stinging side winder flyer from the tri-oval down toward turn one. One car got in the back of him and he went for a ride and he's climbing out okay. Under his own power, they're not having to help him out. That's a good sight. Out of the racetrack. Right there, he gets touched right there. Now this car goes way up in the air. When it turns around, you see it start to fly there. Turns completely up and pancakes right down on the roof. That's what did all that roof damage you were talking about. Then it goes into a barrel roll. Side over side, many, many times. Now it's on the nose of the car and then hits hard on the back. That looked much like Ricky Rudd's flip here in 1984 in what was then the Bush Glass. Another look, you see the back end just lifts up off the ground. You see it's going to come right down on that, about the wind, top of the windshield. Any way you look at that, that was hard contact. That just tells you the cars are very, very strong. You know, in recent years, NASCAR has mandated added bars to the roll cage including one down the center of the windshield and one which would be where your vent window would be if cars still had those and I think that bar that vertical bar helped prevent the windshield the top of the windshield of Michael Waltrip's car from collapsing down on him and certainly saved him from serious injury you're right and that bar runs right down in that area of the, of the windshield and they call it the Earnhardt bar driver I'll take a look at this moment that is Michael Waltrip, out of control, tri-oval, into a series of sidewinders. Nine shattering snap rolls. Less than an hour later, he was out of the infield care center. Into oh, jeez. Is that the 92? That is a big hit. That, I think that's the 92. He was... Oh, man. Yellow's out. It, that better be. Is the window net down? He's moving. 
Oh, oh, something broke. Something broke. Something broke, something in, broke in the car. Oh my god. Something broke in the car. Watch this car move right here. Something breaks on that car. He just clears the trap. Oh. And huge contact with the Armco. And watch as Jimmy climbs out of the car and says, yeah, guys, I'm OK. And you can see here, this is all pretty routine up to this stage. And it jerks to the right. And you can't, there's nothing obvious happening there. But of course, the car now gets launched right here. And it just pretty much clears the sand trap. There's nothing the trap can do at that point. Look at that. I mean, Jimmy's a great off-road racer, but there's no way he could save that one. Well, that was uh, that was pretty remarkable. The lead, Dale oh, Earnhardt and Kevin Harvick. A very hard crash for Earnhardt, Earnhardt. the first serious incident of the day. There we go. Almost like maybe Kevin Harvick was Harvick down was trying, trying to get in the pits. In the pits. Car. And, oh, that's it. I'm telling you, that that's is a brutal a, hit. It is. That that that. I don't like the looks of that. Here he is, and he sees all of a sudden there's Harvick on the outside. Oh boy. Oh, oh wow. Green, green. Here they go. Three, four wide, just like you said, Walt. Yep, now so you're gonna get through you wanna be down on the bottom, I think, going through one of the first lap. You don't have, you certainly don't want to make a three wide, but everybody looks like they're behave them behave themselves so far anyway, but you still gotta get through two and three on the first lap. Ricky Rudd gets the jump, he's the early leader. Uh -oh, oh trouble! trouble. Steve Park is off into the infield. Another car ball over on his lid, it's Park and Dale Jr. Terrible crash. We see the Jimmy Johnson car, and there's Rusty Wallace. You see Park trying to squeeze up the outside. I see he was trying to go on the outside of Rusty. Rusty moves up. They make contact, and Junior gets un under the one car and just kind of bulldozed him into the wall and over. Yeah, that's what actually turned him even more sideways. But I'll tell you what, that guardrail did the job. Oh, it did a great it took job. A lot of, it, it, that absorbed a lot of impact right there. What's a yellow car? Back there, just turn left. And when you hit wet grass, it feels like you pick up 200 mile an hour. But you can see how that barrier gave way when that car got that, in. that barrier absorbed a lot of energy, and I'll tell you what, that, that nice to see happen, because if that were a concrete wall, he would have taken a much harder hit. One more shot. Rusty's right in the middle of the racetrack. Steve Park's going on the outside, but Rusty decides to come up to the outside line, not realizing that Steve was there. May they, made, they made contact, and the ride is on. <clears throat> Look at that barrier give. Thank goodness. But again, that's one reason that Steve was able to walk away arm in arm with Dale Earnhardt Jr. because of that wall that did give. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And you know... just like we saw yesterday you you worry about a driver mistake a mental error but yesterday we saw a mechanical problem that caused the big one right johnny sauter running fourth cut down a tire treble turn one hard a car in the wall and spinning down to the bottom There's going to be 10 or more cars involved johnny benson They come to the flag, and everybody pretty much out of the throttle. Mayhem in turn one. Get some kind of idea about what happens here. Daryl, I believe the 12 car, Ryan Newman, looks like he was out of shape, maybe starting to get loose by himself. And Newman almost flipped over. Remember, he had that hard crash at Daytona where he got on his roof at uh, I back in February. I can't imagine that uh, there wasn't some some sort of contact that started that, because that looked so violent. Man, that car was almost over its on its top right there. It hit that wall a ton. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, the two cars involved. 
as they come through, watch for the last two cars, which I believe, uh, there's Earnhardt Jr. up high getting through with Schrader and Tony Raines. Jr. and Raines are the last two to get through from Rusty Wallace. seeing this truck moving and driving back out on the track and you see the replay of this one you won't believe it you can see the damage on the roof of that truck. it turned over but i'm okay you heard rick he said it turned over but i'm okay and you can hear the crowd screaming position he looks to the inside of todd bodine todd comes down the hill forces him to the inside the air gets underneath the truck turns it over and then back on four wheels what a ride. What a ride. He just, he needs to make sure he doesn't go too fast right now. He's got a flat right front tire. Check out this look. Todd just ping-ponging back and forth, Phil. Yeah, he bounces off of that Terry Cook truck into Rick Crawford. You can see the tire mark on the right side. You see the wheel still spinning on Rick Crawford's truck while it's up in the air. He hits the brakes there. He, he was finally smart enough to let off. That's pretty, <laughs> that's, that's using your head. He's flipping over at Daytona and he let off the gas. I'm proud of him for that. <laughs> going to have a flat right front tire. If he can nurse that thing back to the pit, he might be able to keep racing. Let's take a ride with Terry Cook. Terry Cook was on the outside. He's the truck that Todd Bodine got into. You see there's a contact and Todd bounces off him into Rick Crawford. Just three wide racing off the turn at Daytona and these trucks are really unstable this year, Phil. They're a little bit loose. Bobby Hamilton has impressed us all with his strategy, stuck to his game plan, and now here he is getting ready to battle for the win at Daytona. Got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Whoa, whoa, throttles early on. Chad Chapman gets spun around and upside down. Chapman back onto his wheels, and we were on board with Dennis Setzer. Looks like bunt drafting might be. Yeah, Dennis gave him a little shot. Wow. Wow, completely over. Here goes Terry. Boy, Terry had a wild ride through the grass. Bam! Dennis right yeah. there. Give him a little shot in the back and uh, turn Todd's, or excuse me, turn Chad's truck around and over, by the way. Wow, what a view that was. And hit on the left front wheel, so I'm sure some suspension damage to that, right? Here they are coming off turn number two. See, Dennis is going to get in the back of Chad. You see Chad, he, he pushes him a little bit sideways. Then, then Dennis actually turns him around after Chad comes back to the bottom of the racetrack. And way up in the air he goes. Here comes Terry Cook joining him for a slide through the grass. It's like Robert Huffman might have gotten the back of Terry Cook. I see some damage to the front of that truck. Oh, and it was a pilot behind him. Yeah, once that, once that bump drafting started going crazy, then they just bunched up from behind. Rudiman had nowhere to go, bumped into the 46. Uh, just a good idea gone bad when the bump drafting that they were doing on the back straightaway knocked the 30 truck sideways. We ride along with Dennis there he is. Spencer. Bam, just hit him and got it wiggling. Now I bet you Dennis has hit somebody like that all night long and the truck never moved. You, never you see, he looks like he hits him pretty square, but it looks like his bumper rides up underneath the back bumper of Chad Chaffin, and that may be why it turned him around. It might have picked the rear wheels off the ground, Michael. And then all four wheels were off the ground. And yeah, it had, definitely eventually picked them off, didn't it? He, he, Chad Chaffin had to take a look at the number 30. Just a couple of laps from having a shot at winning at Daytona. And then wound up flipping over, flipping out. He moved up the racetrack and it is really helping him. I mean, he is closing fast now. He's got that high line. He's cutting that gap down, boys. And he's pulling away from Greg Viffle, but he better hurry, Darrell. Lap and a half to go, halfway down the back street. He's coming. Four tenths of a second last lap, three tenths of a second, comes. two he's... laps to go. And this is going to be another one of those Atlantas. I'm telling you, they're going to be side by side when they come to the line next time by. Here they go. White flag, boys. Last time. He's there. And he cut the margin in less than half. Hey, boys, watch this. Jimmy goes up high to block him. That may or may not be good. If he can get that run right here, if he can get it, keep that momentum, he's going to get a run at him. He'll get one shot at turn three and four. I'm telling you, they're going to be side by side when they come to the line. It's going to be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. Johnson tries to block him. It's who can stay in the throttle here off turn four. And here they come, and I think Cole's got the advantage on him. He does. of a second. 
walking at 500 miles. The man are secure, buddy. There is the man right there. That is the man. Today, here's the run for the checkered flag. Final lap. He's there, baby. Here he comes. He's got the momentum. Jimmy, I tell you, Jimmy moved up trying to block Carl. I actually think it hurt him. I think Jimmy had to run the bottom like he had been all day. He may have been a lot better off, but he moved up trying to block Carl, and I think it really hurt him. When they got together, Darrell, you see Jimmy's car slew a little bit and lose its momentum. Yeah, Jimmy right there was trying to get up in front of Carl, but he couldn't quite make it, and I think it really took the momentum away from him. Gave Carl that good run off the high side. You've got so much more speed when you're out there like that, and here you come, closing the gap and taking the lead. How many finishes like this have we had at this place? I mean, look at the truck race, and even yesterday's race was close. And Harvick and, and Dale and Jeff Gordon, and it just goes on and on. 33 lead lap cars as Paul Tracy just made a stop, went a lap down. Crash, car upside down, start finish line. Tony Stewart, it is Stewart. Daniel, Daniel Quinn, Quinn in Paul. the 50 got into it. I don't see anyone else but Stewart has taken a wild ride. What happened? The eight car, Tony had just helped the eight car get to the lead going down the back. The eight car drove to the inside and I think t Tony thinks there's a hole right there that he's trying to get down in and there's just not, uh, he just doesn't no. quite have enough room to get in front of Kenny Wallace. And look at that race car. They just become like feathers blowing in the wind. Now this is a hard lick right here. Unfortunately, it's just uh, it's more in the left front than it is anywhere else. And it was the right side of Stewart's car that took the brunt of the impact as it went over. So he's trying to get down in that hole right there. Not much room. I know Kenny Wallace is doing everything he can probably to give Tony all the room he can, but there's just not enough room there. You see the roof flaps deploy. Car goes upside down and hits hard on the right on the uh, left side. Hand up signal. You're slowing down. See, it's just right there just not quite enough room and again as I've said over and over the car is so light in that part of the racetrack from our DLP cable cam Sixty-eight laps complete. Tony Stewart on his roof, but okay after this wild ride in the Old Spice Chevy. Here's our point standing leader in the next Dell Cup Series, Jimmy Johnson. Qualified third at Lowe's, his eighth. Whoa, boys! This is ugly. Off the wall, off the wall, keep it off the wall. That is wow. a, that is amazing. You can't do that here. Uh, I have never seen that done here. Lord never. Gave him a 10. If you look at how this straightaway slopes toward the infield wall, you can appre appreciate how difficult it was for Jimmy to save this car. You can't do that. Nope. There's no way. Here, right here, right here, the thing should nose into the wall. Okay, so right here, it should come around and nose into the wall. And right here, it, it should, should come around right and wall. nose into the wall. And right here, it should have hit the wall with the back end. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon's happy with that. Well, he's listed as the owner of that car. Dick. <laughs> What'd you think of that? Tens, tens, tens. That was unreal. I, uh, I heard the screams, and I looked up. I knew Jimmy was on the track. I was like, I mean, I've never seen anybody not hit the inside wall doing that. Uh, and I saw he was driving it going backwards. I mean, he was, you know, that was unbelievable. Call it luck or skill, I don't know. But, man, that was pretty awesome to stay out of the wall. I hate that he spun, but it's pretty awesome. You hired yourself a pretty good shoe. Talk about when you started to lose the car. How did you know that, okay, I'm in big trouble here? I lost it pretty early in uh, off of four, I guess it was. And I just tried to let it back up the hill. Um, I thought I was going to hit the outside wall. And really, I didn't sound like I'm some professional here. And I, I meant to stay out. the, the Joey shit with Rocio. I got lucky. End of story. I got lucky. But 
uh, my my trajectory, if if you will, carried me uphill enough at first, and then I kept trying to keep it up the hill, and it worked out. Hell, I I don't know. I was, I'm just lucky. Well, the good news is the car is in good shape, and they're going to take the tires off now. He's flat spotted those, but boy, what could have been surely did not happen. So good news for the 48 fans. This right here is driving skill. Now watch this thing. Here she comes. Here she comes. All right, she's coming around. Now watch the rear tires. Keep your eye on the rear tires. Locked up. Watch them. Watch them. Off the brake. Watch them. On the gas. Off the brake. On the brake. On the brake. On the gas. He knew exactly what he was doing. And it worked. For 10 to go with a whopping 5.4 second lead and Jeff Gordon has crashed. Man, hard. that is a bad crash. It's a hard, hard lift. Drivers. He said the brakes went out. Boy, and he's hurting. I don't like the looks of that at all. Drivers. Driver's side, thank goodness for okay. those safer barriers. Okay, I'll have that. Air out from under this car as it hits. I just can't believe the side of that car. And now the car behind him, the direct TV car of Clint Boyer, watch what he sees. be the same thing I'm sure his windshield ended up looking like you're inside David Rudiman's car Boy, I think Junior may have spun the tires, Larry. And what a break that was for Gordon, but look on the high side. Oh, Gordon comes up. Oh, he, oh, got, he, got, he got Kenseth. Oh, and there goes Jeff. Jeff's in the inside wall, hard oh. into the wall. Caution will wave. Caution will wave. The field is frozen. We'll oh, be coming back man. to four to go. That was, oh, and he almost got clipped again. Four. I, it, it all started with this restart. I mean, this gets everything bottled up, and now it's just a, like a, a real rat race down here into turn one. Jeff's on the bottom. Here comes Matt up on the outside. I think Jeff just shoves up right there, yep. gets into him ever so slightly. And look at Greg Biffle slide by, but that inside lick on the inside wall is what tore Jeff's car all to pieces. They're going to stop the field in turn one so they can clean up turn two. Here's another look. And you're right, Darrell. Jeff's car just pushes up, won't hold the bottom of the racetrack. Couldn't hold it down. And this thing goes in here, and it hits an opening. That's why oh. it knocked. That's what happened. Oh, my God. It hit that opening, and it just ripped the front end off. Of There's it. no safer barrier there. No. no. Now, Jeff is okay. Let's ride along in his Chevrolet. That was one hard lick, but you could hear him playing with that oh, throttle yeah. all the way yeah. through one and well, two. Well, here's what I heard. He went into one. He almost tried like he almost not didn't back off. Then he had to play with that throttle a little bit off of turn two, and the car wasn't biting. It just wasn't getting enough grip. But that opening right there, that could have been disastrous. The show, based on where David Rudiman brought it in the point standings prior to Rudiman getting out of this car, moving into the 44 to replace the now retired Dale Jarrett in the UPS car. There was some talk of whether the team whether the team could switch points. Whoa, 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 guys, whoa, whoa, oh, oh no. Oh, my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh, my gosh. Mo Michael's moving around in the car. My goodness, that car just hooked, went straight, straight in. It did, that, it did that hook and go up the hill, man. And that was a 
incredibly hard impact look into at, a safer look at barrier. That, look at that safer barrier right there, how it just crushed all that stuff. That That is good, though. Oh, that no, means it's that great. thing moved. It's great. It's just incredible how hard it hit. And then, then the flipping help the car dissipate the remaining energy. Yes. Let's take a look. I think you're going to see him get loose the minute oh, he yeah. turns down into the corner. Yeah, and he's just, man, and that thing just absolutely. I will guarantee you that impact was well over 180, probably 185 miles per hour. We've already seen 199 or better getting in there going straight. That's a part of the racetrack. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Goodness. Not knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy dry. Oh, my Lord. But that he walked away and waved to the crowd while walking to the ambulance after that impact is a great testament to safety of these cars and these racetracks today. If there's been any fans, if there's been anybody in our industry that has questioned the car tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this guy that walked out of that race car just a few minutes ago. Well, his day was cut a little bit short, but it's still all smiles down here. Ricky Carmichael, uh, unfortunate circumstance what happened, but were you able to learn oh, problems, about anything? Wendy, oh, we've got we a problem. Caution. The 99 of Ricky Stenhouse almost up in the air. Almost over is the 99 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. This could be the end of the run for the championship. Boy, the right rear tire is gone on that car. We didn't see exactly what started this. We're hearing that he blew the right rear tire, which is what started this. And what a, you know, when you come to Talladega, you could be involved in something that will end your day early. There he is right there, right behind. The right rear tire went down. Justin Laughlin had, Lofton had nowhere to go. Look how high that car gets up in the air and it comes right back down when the roof flaps deploy. Roof flaps have saved a lot of cars from being upside down in our sport. You see the debris right there. The tire already went down. Justin Laughlin was having a great race. He had nowhere to go. He has a lot of damage, but unfortunately, this is the one these guys circled at the beginning of the year. Let's see if we can get by this race without oh, having one. something go wrong like this. And unfortunately for Ricky Stenhouse, he did not get by this race without having a problem. Look at that car get up in the air. The left yeah. front corner, the only yeah. thing remaining on the ground, all four tires up off the ground, the and then balance. came back down. Yeah, it was the only thing touching the ground. Take another look. There's the tire going. It's all the debris already up in the air. There's Justin Laughlin coming by with nowhere to go. A little bit of, I, I'm not sure that Patrick Shelter even made any contact. Looked like he almost went underneath the yeah. rear of that Ford. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr. slams back to the ground. Hits the inside wall. Don't know that the 39 and the 88 can catch them. They're in the draft of Edwards and Keselowski. He's all over you here, just you and him. Carl Edwards restarted eighth. If that nine, if that 09 can stay hooked to the back of the that 39. 99, it's going to be hard to get them. It's going to be close right here at the line. Can Keselowski try to win it? I don't know. I don't think he can step out until he waits till the last second and picks he up. He goes to the outside. Is Edwards going to oh, win? No. He turns him. No. No. Oh, and that no. destroyed the front end of Newman's car. No. Edwards will not make it to the flag. Oh, Brad no. Keselowski won this race. Carl Edwards, he opened it up just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think uh, this is a hard lick right into the fence. I mean, that car, that wow. looked like Bobby Allison did here in 1987. The catch fence did its job Thank and goodness. the car did its job. Thank goodness we have the new, stronger, much stronger, safer uh, catch fences. And Newman took a hard hit from Edwards as well. Look at just a car with the room left on the bottom. And what happened here is the 09 looked to the outside. Carl went up a little bit to block him, and 09 went right back to the bottom and clipped him. You know, the move looked a lot like the one that Brian Vickers put on Jimmy Johnson when Vickers won. Wow. But what a hit. Wow. That is 1987 all over again. 89. But watch. The 09 is going to look to the outside where he already has. Carl went up to block him a little bit. Now he's going to come down to try to block him again. And... You get one shot at it, but you don't get two. Watch this. What a lick. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Unbelievable. 
You know, and, and looking very carefully at the catch fencing that held, and I did not see any debris go into the grandstand, uh, and that certainly is unbelievable. It's very gratifying to see. Well, <laughs> I knew it was going to be wild. I didn't know it was going to be this wild. Right here, the three back from him. This is from Carl's onboard looking camera. Inside, zero nine. But Daryl, I, I want to ask you. And from Dale Jr. Oof. But Daryl, I want to ask you on air because I did not see Brad Keselowski do anything wrong there. No, no, it was a blocking move on Carl. The 09 looked to the outside. Carl went up to block that move, and when Carl came down, the 09 was there. Get a look at it right here. You can see, whoa, it really gets loose. A fast part of the track as you're exiting, trying to get, wow, look at the car get up in the air. Man, that's a violent hit. That's a tire wall over there in front of the guardrail that you hit, and you could see that it just sent the car airborne. Right, take a look one more time, and thank goodness there was a tire barrier here. Yeah, you could see him coming out of turn nine, wide open in the throttle, but there is a tire barrier in front of the guardrail there. But look at it, send the car airborne. Oh, oh, look out! Trouble. Oh, and upside down is Earnhardt. This is going to be a mix. Thanks, man, behind the, wave. the 33 of Harvick, Joey Logano involved. More cars still spinning in this. Caution, Spinner and hard hit in turn three. It's 48 car. And A.J. Allmendinger, Jimmy Johnson, and A.J. hard up into the wall in three. Boy, look at that thing. Now, the caution had already come out when that happened, and, and look that, at that 48 thing. is junk. I have never seen a 48 car torn up quite like that. She is done. Not a happy camper either. Watch the 48. Things are going to happen up front. There goes the 37 up and around. It's Kevin. It's Conway. He makes slight contact with the outside wall. But then. That's up in two. Down in turn three. Oh, here comes a. Here. Oh. Jimmy Johnson just nowhere to go. The 43 car of Allmendinger just coming back up the racetrack right in front of him. That is a huge hit. So the caution apparently was for Conway into the wall. Yeah, look at Not Allmendinger. Not sure why Allmendinger was so far down on the racetrack. That's brutal right there, man. That is a hard, hard lick. Green. Oh, my right. gosh. Oh, oh my oh gosh. My. Hey, Lord, look at that. Head on into that Armco. That's down, that's down in a 90 degree corner. All right, guys, we crashed off a two here. Alex Kennedy into the wall as the 23 has heavy damage on the right front and right rear. You can see as you come off the corner, a lot of times you're able to catch this and maybe not hit anything, but he catches the outside wall and then that Banking carries you all the way down to the inside where you slam that and really tear your race car up. Uh, no! What happened to Kevin Swindell? Holy cow. Good Lord. That is the 23, and what happened here? Must have pulled up in front of him. Oh, oh wow. Man. Oh. oh. What a man, what a bad break for Swindell, dude. What did he do? He drove straight across the damn racetrack. I had the wheel cranked and everything. I was trying to go back up the track to just try and get back down to the pits and everything. Um, see if we can maybe salvage the car as it was. And it wouldn't turn. And it just, I was, it started turning on me. It started feeling like normal. And then all of a sudden it just stopped turning and went straight to the truck, went straight to the top. And so I wasn't expecting that. And so I just tried to, I just got stopped, you know, thinking, okay, I can't roll back down in case people are coming. But. He picked up his first career win here back in May. And all he has to do now is negotiate two more corners, and he's going to do it again at Iowa Speedway. He dominated last week, Marty. Didn't get the win, but it looks as though he's got a little redemption in mind here tonight. He, oh, look out as he has a tire situation. Here comes Edwards right wow. into it. They cross the line, and guess who wins the race? Stenhouse. Thanks to Carl Edwards. Gave him a oh, what a real race finish. All right, take another look at this. Okay, all of a sudden. No, I don't think that's the engine. That's an engine. That's the engine. You're that's right. Wow. And I wonder if.
arm got into the fluid and he couldn't steer. I would think so, because you'd think he could have missed it, but it's hard to say from up here. You're right, though, and look at the tire from there. He did a good job of just keeping it. Uh, he had smoked and oil, I guarantee you. I think he so, just couldn't miss him. Well, let's just listen yeah. this time from Carl's perspective. You could hear the rear tire spinning. And, and you couldn't see anything in neither car. No, and he couldn't steer. All right, let's show you this finish. The margin of victory is 66 one thousandth of a second. Well, <laughs> he wasn't beside him, he was under him. <laughs> it, again, <laughs> it's appropriate that they came together at the finish. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's got it's some got, brakes. The front brakes are, the left front's locked up. It's almost like the throttle hung. Gosh, man, that could have been. It could have been the throttle hung pushing the front tire. Man, look at how much it moved that guardrail, even through yeah, the tire barrier. You can see the smoke from the front tires, like he's trying to get this car stopped, and maybe the throttle is hung partially. Man. Yeah, those rear tires are still going hard. Yeah. Oh. Naturally, it brings up the images of Jimmy Johnson's terrible crash there in that Nationwide Series race several years back when he lost his brakes He's over the, the top of the gravel oh. trap. It's, it's like, oh, oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. Wow. Like Boris said, got into the six car. David Reagan. Oh, my goodness. That's a hard lick for David Reagan. This, oh, my goodness. Fellow is also into the wall in that. Wow, terrible. Marcos Ambrose managed to get by Brad Keselowski and lead the last lap of this race, and he's going to pick up his first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win in the 46 car. Got to race his way in on time. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh, oh no, that's not good. He's not going to save that one. Oh, oh. that's a hard lick. A hard lick right there. Look out on pit road. Wow. So, now this thing just jumps out so far that he just can't quite get it saved and it sends him through the grass. Chase Miller released from the infield care center, walking fine. How are you feeling? Um, you know, physically I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I hate it for, uh, for ourselves, Key Motorsports and everybody out here, you know, it's just the car got a little tied up off the corner and, and uh, kind of snapped loose on me a little bit. And I was going to, to log it down. I realized there's people over here, you know, all this stuff lined up. So I just kind of corrected a little bit, just kind of held the wheel straight to see if maybe I just get a straight shot and maybe make it back on the track. But very seldom, obviously, do you, uh, do you get to go through the grass and get straight back on the track. Uh, it's a big hit. It, it hurt a little bit, but uh, you know, it just yeah, I guess it's just one of those things. We're trying hard, trying to make the shows, and uh, I guess you know it's been a few years since I've really been wrecked. I guess it's about time for one. Well, it's good to see you there. You're all right. And the safety built into these next generation race cars. Yeah, the, the Hans device, that's exactly the type of lick that it's designed to, to help the driver with. Take that second position away, and he will. Hop on over, Danny Bone. Oh, my goodness. Danny. 
There's the white car on the outside. Gets loose and into Priest, and the car goes up and over. Yeah, and, and those those open wheels with Ryan Priest, it's almost like they just lock together. A lot of Nerf bars on these cars that should keep much of that from happening. But really, the right front just climbs the wall, Larry. Yeah, he ran out of racetrack. There was no more room there. That is Priest against the wall behind him. In real time. Yeah, that's that's what it exactly did. It just that right front tire, it just started climbing up the wall. A frightening ride for Danny Bone. And he is okay. Yeah, watch the run these drivers get that are lined up. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there in the 88. Watch the burn. Oh, 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 here, here we go. Here we go. And she's all right after a hard crash, and the caution flag is out. The race is over. That's uh, Tony Stewart will win the race. Uh, God, we got that camera in there with Danica and see she's fine. And she's at the back. back of the pack in the inside, and they're four wide across here, just about as Almondinger leads them way up the high side. Where is the contact? Somebody's going to come down into her, I think. Almarola. Yeah, right there. He got on the bumper of it looked like McMurray's car, the one, turned him a little bit to the uh, left. Thank God for safer barriers. That was a hard, hard lick. It's almost that car didn't even look like it slowed down as it was going across there. I'm so glad that the, all these racetracks have found, have put safer barriers where we never had them before. And here's a perfect example of why we need them everywhere. So Danica Patrick is okay after this. Bottom, bottom, bottom. There you go. Keep digging. Three wide. Goodness gracious. Let's go on board. Bottom, bottom, bottom. There you go. Keep digging. Three wide. Is that, is that not, did you see what she did with her hands? Yeah, all that open wheel experience, Indy Darryl. car, all that open wheel experience. She knew not to hold on to that steering wheel. That is amazing. I saw her do that here in the ARCA race a couple of years ago. I mean, if you hold on to the wheel there, you can break a wrist easily. Yeah, but. When that you, wheel wrenches your, but your hands. Do you just have any idea when you're headed for that wall that fast that you got this, you got the time to think about letting go and putting your hands up like that? has moved all the way up into the top 10, top five currently running fourth. He's talking about running with Jason White. He says, get outside, here I come. They're dead even right now for the lead. Here comes Todd Bodine on the outside too, making it three wide back there, about six rows back of two by two. But side by side, coming out of oh, number two, around goes the 32 and hard into the wall. Miguel Paluto, hard into the wall, coming out of turn number four. Very reminiscent of Danica's accident in the duel. Caution comes out for the fifth time. Miguel Paluto running in the top three. Slides coming out of turn number four and then a head in collision with the inside wall. And what a great sign to see that window net go down as the safety crew will get to him immediately. Coming. Let's see if we see any contact here. He's the second car on the ins or second truck on the inside line. Wow, maybe he let off the, maybe he made an evasive like action there because of PK Jr. Wow, Look at what the a, violence! What an impact! That, how how violent that was! That truck weighs 3,500, 3,700 pounds, and it flies up in the air like that and catches on fire, and yet. And I, we saw how quickly Miguel Paluto had put the window net down, was taking his helmet off. Amazing. I think he got in the back of Nelson PK Jr. And when it did, when he did, that slowed his momentum. And that's, I think, James Busher got into him. Watch Take this now. Look. It's hard to see. You can see right there. You could see, you could see PK get a little bit sideways. 
That's real time speed right there. But I don't I don't know if those trucks make high. I know PK got sideways and then all of a sudden Pluto gets sideways and these trucks handle well enough. It's hard to understand how this could have happened. Watch how close now Pluto gets to PK. I think he just made a I think the leader just got loose and and Paluto just made an evasive, a bit of a quick move, and he lost his truck. Maybe. I, th I think there was. I think there was contact. Dude, let's see. Riding along with Ron Hornaday now. Watch, watch the leader get sideways. You're right. I don't think there was any contact nah. he, he, from front or behind. And I think Miguel just said, oh, no, where's he going? And you remember earlier when Polly Haraka right there off turn four where the track flattens out. You're going very fast there. The banking goes away and the trucks are light there. The back end is light. He makes a move because he sees his teammate a little bit sideways and into the inside wall he goes. John King's doing a great job as Terry Cook told him. Left side's on the yellow line. Besides the outside line might be the way to go. Look at Tom O'Donnell, he's coming back. He's got pushing from Joey Coulter and they're making some ground. Now moving off of the bottom of the racetrack as they come into the tri-oval. Right Daniel Liner trying to make something happen up top here. Stay on the other line. Jason Go White, and around Stay they go. The that line. will bring the caution out the as Joey line. Coulter goes flying into the catch finish. Just past the start finish line. And that will mean John King will win you at Daytona. John, you just wanted Daytona. You come here, get this checkered flag. That's the all yellow. yours right there, my friend. And the checkered. Get that checkered flag. Okay. John King, a winner at Daytona International Speedway. This is how it happened as far as the caution coming out. Look back in the middle there, the 22 of Joey Coulter. A little bit of contact with the 31 of James Busher. Gets up into the catch fence, and man, does that catch fence do its job. And of course, Ty Dillon slipped right through again. See Ty there in the truck with the bright neon orange just slips right through. I'm just glad Coulter's okay. That was wild looking. See the way it ripped that back of that truck apart? Well, it sure did. And the front. James Busher in the 31 got into the back of that 22. <laughs> Watch this. Well, look at that ride, will you? Is that Hornaday going underneath Joey Coulter? Toyota series by the big wreck on the front strip. Ben Kennedy slides out of line and slams the outside wall. Still got him coming here. Just hold on. You're okay. Brakes, 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 brakes. You okay, Ben? His teammate Tyler Reddick also in the top five as we look back at what happened. Whoa, Nemechek got loose there for some reason. He, he, maybe he got a push from the 84. Chris Fontaine was right behind him. Maybe Chris got into the back of Nemechek and that turned him sideways into Ben Kennedy. It didn't, didn't look like it was a situation where Nemechek was trying to get in line. Looks like he just got loose. Look again, see how he, he weaved down to the inside there? with Chris Fontaine, that yellow and blue truck right behind him. Yeah, and your truck isn't going to get loose just running through the trial oval here. These things have a lot of downforce on them. It's stuck good there. So the way that looked, it's something something made Nemechek's truck turn to the inside. And unfortunately for Ben Kennedy, there he was. Boy, it has, sure has to look like maybe Chris Fontaine got into the back of that eight truck of Nemechek. And unfortunately, Ben Kennedy sure paid the price. Paid it twice. Yeah, that second hit was hard, too. On board with Matt Crafton. How many times has Matt Crafton seen this kind of stuff, Phil? Yes. He, he rolls to the back of the pack and. And Kenson cleared by Logano. Maybe no. Kenson takes him out. Logano into the wall. Caution comes out and the crowd roars. This is what just took place. And clearly, the 22 is lapping at 20. And when he obviously intentionally wrecked him and but like what happened the week before was more than two weeks before was more than it should have been and just flat wrecking. Matt Kenseth already not having the day that he wanted to have. And the opportunity presented itself itself at a short track. Yeah, 
down there. Still down there. Still down there. Still down there. Once the favorite for the title, Joey Logano out of his car. Matt Kenseth out of his car. Keep it behind you. Keep it behind you. Keep it behind you. One to go. One to go. The white flag is out. They're going to crash. Sauter with a big run. They're crashing. Christopher Bell upside down. Truck. On the outside, second in line. Peters gets bumped. Looks like William Byron got jumped by the 86. Look at Timothy Peters on the inside as Christopher Bell tumbles down the front straightaway. Timothy all the way to the inside of the racetrack is, you know, a lot of new pavement down there, guys, and that makes such a huge difference. They don't get any grass, a lot of huge pavement scrubs off a lot of that speed. I count 13 rolls for Christopher Bell. Watch it. Well, Daniel Hemrick almost went underneath that fourth truck of Christopher Bell. It's a testament to the safety of these racing vehicles that Christopher Bell can take that kind of ride Christopher and Bell's then drop the window net and climb out. Very fortunate that these trucks are as safe as they are. Look at this truck just get out of control. Probably about the fastest part of this speedway feel right out of the tri-oval. Mm -hmm. It just starts tumbling. That young man with his dirt racing background, I'm sure he's had many barrel rows in his career, but none like that. And Michael, I know you've been upside down. I've been up sound like that. The flipping's not that bad, but it's the landing that hurts. And that thing landed about six or eight times pretty hard. What about Brandon Brown? He slides through there. Looks like he's going to be credited with a fourth place finish. I think he might have got in the back of William Byron, and that's what got in the back of the four of Christopher Bell and turned him sideways. Wow. But we saw, you know, experienced driver like Timothy Peters. Let's watch this view. You coming to wreck and wreck and back it up, back back, back it out, back it out, back it out. Wow, he had, to, he had to turn hard left to avoid the flipping Christopher Bell. Screen is Kyle Whoa. Bush. And around goes Kyle Larson. Ooh. Bam. Oh, Ooh. Big impact. Man. Thank God that safer bear is there, but that was still a huge impact. Second caution of the day, lap wow. 48. That thing hit head on. Did you see it go up in the air, oh, DW? It reminded me of when uh, when Denny Hamlin wrecked down here off turn four a couple of years ago. Yeah, I see him moving around inside there. Coming, coming, coming. Oh, yeah, Ooh. you see right there, left yep. rear tire goes out, and he's yep. lost control at this moment. He's trying to keep it going straight. Yep. Hits Bam. the outside wall. This is the one that's going to hurt. Yeah, Watch this thing come down ride. through here. Head on into that inside wall. Just Roof nothing flapped. he can do at this point. Just hang on. And Watch straight it. into the Look safer at, barrier. Watch that safer barrier. Watch that thing flex and shoot that car back out. Now you're talking about a 3,400 pound piece of machinery lifted all four wheels up in the ground and spin is, spins it around like a top. Probably running about 140, maybe 50 miles an hour, even in the scrub, at that point, yeah, trying to the, scrub off speed. As it scrubs off speed, still carrying a tremendous amount of speed. Just can't catch the left rear down. The car wants to turn right, hits that outside wall. And watch this safer barrier. I mean, that thing bowed in and it took sorbed all that energy. If, all right, we got one lap to go. White flag, one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. <laughs> and here it is. Here's wow, the move. look at this. Oh. Content. Did they make content? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. It's pretty close, but this is going to be a drag wow. race. Last gasp, Woo. turn three, last lap. Traffic ahead. Kyle Busch, the leader. Look at this. Carl look at Edwards this. right look at there. This. Moves wow. him to win it. Carl yeah, Edwards yeah. bump and dump and run. Oh, God. How did no. he pull that off? That's a teammate. Oh, Yikes. my goodness. 27 oh, victories. You're a fan, dude. You're a fan. I don't know what happened, but that was cool. Two in a row for Carl Edwards. Sixth time in his career, he goes back to back, and that is the first last lap pass in the history of Richmond International Raceway.
in three and four, and I'd already decided to go down there. So I thought, man, I'm going to give him a little nudge. And, um, you know, we both got wins, and we're racing for fun, getting these trophies. And Blue by Justin. Now, Joey Logano continues to drive back to the front. 14th already, Matt. That left front corner structurally sound, and they have repaired it with big oh. one. Oh, my goodness. The 25 hit hard. That's Chris Cockrum. Gosh, that's a hard hit. Scary, scary moment coming off of turn two. Appeared to be the 52 of Joey Gase. Also got a piece of it, damage sitting inside. Oh, that's, uh, a that's a great sign. Got the zero turns right into the 25. The Joey Gase is just an innocent bystander here. Oh, he just barely clipped that wall that jets out there, and that sent that car spinning like a top. Look at all the debris scattering. Smithley was just trying to help, and I think it, I think it pushed the 25 out a little bit. And when he tried to tuck back in line, it spun him around. That's something as a driver you really got to be careful of. Coming off of the corners here, where the banking falls away, the back of the, these cars get really, really light. So if you're, I mean, sometimes you don't even have to touch the driver in front of you, but if there's any contact at all, you're going to see a result like we just saw. The 48 so has got to stay close, one, tight better, to the 22 here to have a chance. You're clear. Stay in like that. Stay in like that. The one bounce you out. Now watch it. How did Elliot Sadler get back on the road and not lose any ground? He's going to have a chance to win this race. He's, if he pulls high. Joey Logano gets turned. Elliot Sadler drives through. We're They're see. crashing big time at the line. Brendan, Brendan Poole. Poole. First career win at Talladega. How about that for Brendan Poole? And oh, and a big hit for, from Blake. Huge crash. What a great job by Elliott Sadler. Crashed on the back straightaway, but yet vying for the win on the front. Just gets pushed low and can't keep his momentum up to win the race. How about Jeremy Clements for the third place finish? Great run for that team. Don't let him flip to the outside. Stay in with him. Trail up, trail up, trail up, sir. Lights out. Yeah, they can do as a wreck, yeah. Unofficially, we had the margin of victory at 26 one thousandths of a second. So just over two one hundredths. And I think about Brennan Poole out of the Woodlands, Texas. Spent a lot of time on the short tracks out west. Yeah. Ran in Arca, and, and when he didn't have a ride, was going to the track, working in the shop, doing anything he could do to stay around the sport. Got this opportunity last year. Adam, <laughs> he sat down at the start-finish line Say, please, can I just have it? I know I won this race. Let's see what the video shows here. What would you anticipate they're, they're looking at? Because I, I never saw the caution lights come on, and the only thing I can think of is that is that NASCAR would have deemed the caution lights came on before they got to the start-finish line, and Poole uh, was not leading at the time of caution. That's that's possible. Stanley Steamer. Whoa, there's, oh, and no. around she goes oh, we go. into oh, Kenseth. Man. Oh, gosh. Up in the air and into the wall. Hard. Man, Kenseth. Man, I thought he was going to catch the catch fence back there. The way I it landed not, was... I am not believing it. Uh, he's fine, boy. He got the window net down right away out of frustration. Side she's down. She's right in the middle, the fourth, fifth car back. I think somebody makes contact with. Oh, uh, McDowell oh, got McDowell. her in the left rear. Yep. Yep. And that oh turned. no, he hit. She hit him in the right front. And when oh, when and that Nagano happened, just got air underneath the car. Is anybody left in this race? Look at Kurt Busch. Battling out there on the outside of the 19. Whoa! Wrecked down the back straight with the 19. You, big Kidding wreck me? You, big wreck behind you. Cross it down. Cross it down. Well, we knew that uh, it might be a little wild and crazy here at the end. Yeah, yeah, that would hurt. Damn, man. Give me a break. Who was that? That was Kyle 32. Larson. What an idiot. There's See Larson. Larson on the right, right coming up behind Edwards. Yeah, Sergeant he got right a little here. loose. Yeah, think, yeah. You know what? I think you're right. I, I think Carl me, got a little loose. He was under the 41. That sucked him around just a tiny bit. The back end stepped out ever so slightly, and he had to check up, and the 42 just had momentum. Yeah, he's sideways, and Larson's on the gas. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, I understand Carl saying, hey, cut me mm -hmm. a break. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's saying, yeah, I got a little loose, and I need you to maybe check up a little bit, but... 
And he blocked him a little bit too. He, he definitely yeah. ran a low line there. Yeah. I, pow. That is a, look at that safer bear. Look at, oh my gosh. That's how the a car vicious hit. Back. Mean. I imagine that no matter how good a shape you're in, that would hurt. Be ready for the dive. Uh-oh. Oh, oh he's wheel hopping. He's gonna Hamlin hit him. Hamlin is there. He hit him. Hey, oh my got him. Oh, oh no. 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 It's not over. Get him back. Denny got in there and wheel hopped. I don't think he meant for that to happen, but then he made contact with Tony. I think Tony was also pretty loose getting in there. Well, that, that was what happened to Tony lap before, you know, when he got loose into seven and that allowed Hamlin to close up. Hey, this thing's not over, guys. Watch oh. what happens into turn 11 in this heavy braking zone. Two more corners. Hamlin trying to pull Tony's away. Close yeah. enough. I think Tony used up his stuff. I mean, we knew he was having, you know, issues Here we go. the car. Uh, uh, uh. Stewart inside. Oh, he is there. Wild. He Went gets Hamlin. They Whoa. hit. And Stewart comes off turn 11. Oh, Look at that. He's oh, coming oh, to the flag. Oh, How did Tony that Stewart win? How did that happen? His uh, spotter, Eddie DeHunt, just told him it's time oh, to be greedy. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh. Here we go. Oh, upside Side down. Upside side. Well, AJ, that was a humdinger.